For a lot of you, this is one of your struggles when trading, and it is anticipating how deep a retracement is going to happen. Because if you look here, right, in a basic market structure, this is essentially the ideology behind all your trades. In a bullish market structure, you want to wait for price to come back into a discount rate, realign bullish, and then catch the entry to go long. That is essentially the basic ideology behind the majority of your trades. The reason why I say the majority is because here, this doesn't necessarily mean all your trades have to have an offer here. Once price has expanded after retracing, this is where you could enter your trades as well to catch the continuation of the expansion phase. But your highest probability trades will always be when price retraces into a discount rate, gives you that realignment to go bullish, and then that is where you would look to go long. The reason being is due to the two functions, seek liquidity and then rebalance old inefficiency. That is the only way price could move. And because that is the only way price can move, that presents to you in a bullish market structure, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and higher highs. The process from higher highs to higher lows is your retracement. In an overall bullish market structure, price will always require retracements to rebalance old inefficiencies, accumulate more long positions before taking price higher. So once you've identified the retracement stage and you look to go long from here, that is where you will have the highest probability trades because you are not anticipating for a retracement to happen. If you was to catch continuations here at this overall expansion length, Especially when price has already taken out a draw on liquidity being this thing high over here. So if you refine this to this specific price segment, you will have to anticipate when a retracement is likely going to happen. And there's difficulty involved in that because you don't know when price is likely going to retrace from here. Hence why, like I said, these kind of trades will always be your highest probability trades. So one of the keystones for this trade setup to occur is being able to anticipate how deep a retracement is likely going to be. Now, there are two factors that can determine this. However, even though the two factors tell you that price is going to have a deep retracement, for example, this isn't necessarily the case. There is never 100% certainty within the markets, but those two factors will give you a high chance of it happening. And all trading is, is a game of probabilities, right? So if you have higher probability of something happening, that will increase the chances of your trade setup presenting and then playing out. So, two factors are how deep your initial expansion move was. Because if it was a really deep expansion move, for example, it leaves behind a large liquidity void, price would generally have a minor retracement initially and then price drop lower to sweep out this sell side liquidity before it reverses to fill in your large liquidity void over here, right? So that is considered from here to here, that is considered a deep retracement. So once it fills in this large liquidity void, this is where it reverse to continue lower. The reason being is imagine this was on your lower time frame. If you jump up to your higher time frame, this is just one large retracement and one large expansion on your higher time frame in an overall bearish direction. That is what it would look like on your lower time frame. On your lower time frame, that is just a deep retracement. And then for your minor expansion moves, so let's say price is steadily bullish, it doesn't leave behind large liquidity voids. And instead, it leaves behind your normal imbalances and inefficiencies. So as that is the case, a lot of times, depending on the asset you trade, price doesn't necessarily have to have a deep retracement before continuing higher. Depending on how aggressive these expansion stages are, the majority of times, it could just come down to your most immediate imbalance before continuing higher. But the reason why I say this depends on your asset is because when you trade different assets, the characteristics of the retracement slightly differs, right? So I know for Nasdaq, this is the case most of the time. Price retraces into your immediate discount rate before it shoots off again because that asset has just been constantly pumping bullish. However, for assets like EU, a lot of times if you draw your range, price will have a retracement into at least the 50% level before it continues higher. Right, so even though the idea is the same, the characteristics of the retracement will slightly differ depending on what asset you trade. So this is something you would just have to test out for yourself. But that's the first factor how large the previous expansion range was. The second factor, the most obvious one, what type of a swing point it is and how price trades through that swing point. If you look here, imagine this is just the same time frame, right? This is, let's say, the hourly time frame. If price has a full body closure past this swing low, what is it showing you? It's showing that price has heavy conviction to continue bearish. So because it has heavy conviction to continue bearish, 
This means Price doesn't necessarily want to have a deeper retracement. Because the basic idea is, a deeper retracement is to accumulate more positions. The deeper a retracement is, the more positions it accumulates. So because in this previous example, from here to here, Price has shown heavy conviction to continue dumping bearish, you could think of it like it has enough accumulation of short positions to continue dumping lower. This full body closure past the swing low shows the market being desperate to continue lower. So that means the majority of the time, you are less likely going to get a deep retracement from here. And instead you could just get a minor retracement before it continues dumping lower. Now, this is different if price has a wick below this swing low. This wick below that swing low shows a sweep. It shows indecisiveness for price to continue dumping lower. So as that is the case, this is where you can anticipate for possibly a deeper retracement or a complete reversal overall. On the higher time frame, if you were still bearish, that reversal on your lower time frame after you had this sweep is possibly just a retracement on your higher time frame before continuing lower. So imagine your higher time frame was bearish, this possible reversal could just be into another premium array before it gives you a reversal to go bearish. This is just your advanced market structure. So based on the candle closes, that is where you can anticipate for price to either have a deep or minor retracement. The second thing that falls under your swing low is the type of swing low it is. So here, this is just a normal short term low, right? If you imagine this still being your hourly time frame, this is just your usual short term lows that you get on your hourly time frame. So because that's the case, when price takes out this swing low, you're not necessarily anticipating too deep of a retracement because this swing low is insignificant. The idea behind this is the higher time frame you go, the more significant that swing low becomes. So imagine this is, is no longer isn't your one hour swing low. And instead, this is like a daily swing low. Because it is a daily swing low, on the higher time frame, this becomes much more significant. So when price takes out a higher time frame swing low, this is where you can anticipate for again a deeper retracement. And that's because as this is a higher time frame swing low, on your higher time frame direction, this is going to be again a retracement on your higher time frame, which is a deeper retracement and possibly a reversal on your lower time frame. So always be aware of the type of swing low it takes out. Right, if it was a higher time frame swing low, anticipate a deeper retracement. If it is a normal swing low, a normal short term low, anticipate possibly a minor retracement before it continues lower. So, if you go on US 100 now, let's look at a couple of examples. If you start from here, you can see how after price took out this swing higher over here, it leaves behind a large imbalance. Yeah, and if you jump down onto your lower time frame, such as the hourly, let's say, this is just one large liquidity void. So that means sooner or later, price has to come back and rebalance this liquidity void. In hindsight, we know it does that. And the reason why it does that, and because we know that sooner or later, price has to come back and rebalance this large liquidity void, this is where we can anticipate a deeper retracement. So if you keep playing price out, in hindsight, that's exactly what it does. It rebalances this liquidity void over here. But if you go onto the daily, you can see this is where we are starting to get our market reversal, right? Your change in state of delivery. After your weekly, price action came into this imbalance over here and your weekly has a higher time frame bullish direction. So that means on your higher time frame, we are still anticipating for bullish price action, especially when the daily has given you a change in state of delivery now. As that's the case, what would you anticipate? Would you anticipate for this large liquidity void over here that was created as a result of rebalancing this liquidity void, would you anticipate for price to come back, have a deep retracement, right? As you would anticipate when a large liquidity void is left behind and continue lower, or would you anticipate it to rebalance and then just continue higher? You would anticipate the latter, right? Because your higher time frame direction is bullish. So if you play price out, in hindsight, that's exactly what it does. And as you can see here, this is what I mean when I mentioned the type of retracement you're likely going to see depends on the asset you trade because different assets have different retracement characteristics. As mentioned with US 100, the majority of the times, if you draw your range, let's say from here to here, it doesn't always come down to your 50% level before continuing higher. You can see after price took out this swing high over here, it gives you a minor retracement into your immediate imbalance, this one here, before it continues to shoot off. Same thing here, right? If you draw a new range here, it doesn't necessarily respect that 50% level, you have an inversion level that price retraces back into. And this is where you can anticipate it to continue shooting off. 
And as you can see here, you have these swing highs. The price doesn't have a full body closure past, so it's showing you indecisiveness in price to continue higher. And as a result, it gives you a deeper retracement. Back into these imbalances. As well as sweeping this source of liquidity before you can anticipate it to distribute higher. Right, and that's exactly what it does. Because it's showing you conviction now, you can anticipate for a minor retracement to happen as opposed to a deeper retracement. But in this case, even though you were anticipating for a minor retracement, it doesn't necessarily give you that minor retracement. And that's fine, because I mentioned at the start of this video, price isn't going to move as clean as you expect it to move. It's not going to give you a minor retracement just because the two factors that I've mentioned outline that you could anticipate a minor retracement. But the key thing here is, when price retraces this point and this point, you are looking for that realignment on the lower time frame to go long. And that is where you could take the majority of your profits. So even though you are anticipating for a minor retracement, you don't actually enter straight away off of the minor retracement until price gives you that realignment, whether that's on a lower time frame, market structure reversal to continue higher, or any type of market reversal for that matter. But if you're not acting straight away on your anticipation, you always want to wait for that confirmation that price has realigned after it's given you that retracement. But here, Swing high, full body closure through. Again, you can anticipate a minor retracement. What does it do here? Comes into this imbalance. So what I mean by looking for confirmation is you could drill down into your lower time frame, right? After price retraces into that higher time frame imbalance, and look for that confirmation that we are going to realign to go bullish. And as you can see here, that's exactly what it does. So for this specific example, you didn't necessarily have to look for that confirmation on your lower time frame, because on the higher time frame. That would have already given you a strong bullish candle. Because price has a full body closure past the swing high, it's showing conviction that it wants to continue higher, so it gives you a minor retracement. Continue to play price out. Minor retracement, swing high, that gets formed, but it leaves behind a wick, right? There's indecisiveness for price to continue higher, so you could anticipate a deeper retracement into this discount array level. And that's exactly what it does. It gives you a deep retracement. If you draw your range, it is just past your 50% level. And from here, you could anticipate it to continue higher. Again, not enough conviction yet, so what would you anticipate? Deeper retracement. Look at that, deeper retracement. Sweeps this sell side liquidity, and you can anticipate for this to distribute higher. If you have a look at gold here, focusing on that second factor being the type of swing point it takes out, whether it's significant or insignificant, depending on the time frame that you found it on. Look at this, right? You leave behind a large range. This is a large liquidity void that price has to eventually fill in the future. You know that this fills in the future. So because that is the case, you are anticipating for price to have a deeper retracement, right? And you know it does before it continues lower. The reason being is because this large liquidity void on a four hour, if you jump onto the higher time frame, this is just one large expansion move and it leaves behind imbalances. So here, this is one large expansion move. And from here to here, this is just one retracement move on your 12 hour to rebalance this old inefficiency before continuing lower. So on the four hour, that would look like a deep retracement, which is exactly what you had here. But if you look at this price action over here, imagine a four hour is now your higher time frame. Yeah, look at what price does every time it takes out a swing low. Every time it takes out a swing low, it is going to give you a deep retracement on the lower time frame relative to the 4 hour. So if the 4 hour is your higher time frame, the 1 hour will be your lower time frame. So because on a 4 hour, it takes out a key level, aka this swing low, which is extremely significant because it's a higher time frame level, on the 1 hour being your lower time frame, this is where you could anticipate for a deeper retracement before continuing lower. That deeper retracement could even give you a market reversal, but if you are aware of your higher time frame direction, then you would understand that that market reversal was to simply give you a deep retracement, accumulate more short positions, rebalancing old inefficiencies on your higher time frame, being the 4 hour because you took out this 4 hour swing low before it continues lower. So the basic idea is, if you take out a higher time frame swing point, anticipate for a deeper retracement. It's the same thing if you go into the daily, right? You took out this swing low. This is a very significant swing low because it was on the daily, and then this is where you had a retracement into this imbalance before it continues lower. And as you can see here, the same thing applies to this one. You take out this significant swing low and it gives you a retracement on the daily. Even though the retracement on the daily seems insignificant, right? Because this doesn't look like a deep retracement, 
if you go down onto the 4 hour, you can see that this is a deep retracement to eventually rebalance this large liquidity void left behind on the 4 hour. And you know that this large liquidity void on the 4 hour is just a single daily candle. And as you can see here, current price action, it gives you an extremely deep retracement to rebalance this large liquidity void over here. So that concludes this video. Those are the two factors that you could use to determine whether a price is going to have a minor or a deep retracement. But remember, even though you are anticipating for a minor or a deep retracement, you don't actually enter in your trades until price gives you the realignment with the higher time frame direction to indicate that that retracement phase has come to an end. And this is where you could anticipate the expansion stage to take profits at. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. And like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.